Let's get right into it. Number 10. The Newton's Apple Tall Tale. The image of Isaac Newton sitting under a tree and getting bonked on the head by a falling apple is the ultimate scientific eureka moment. We love the idea that gravity was discovered because a piece of fruit decided to assault a genius. In reality, the apple probably didn't hit him, and he definitely didn't have a sudden epiphany. Newton himself later told people he watched an apple fall and started wondering why things always fall down instead of sideways or up. It wasn't a sudden, aha, moment. It was years of grueling, soul-crushing math that would make your high school calculus teacher weep. The bonk on the head story was just a bit of 17th century PR to make his incredibly dense theories more relatable to people who didn't want to read a thousand pages of Latin. Gravity wasn't discovered by an apple. It was discovered by a guy who was so obsessed with physics, he once stuck a needle in his own eye socket just to see what would happen to his vision. Number 9. The Survival of the Fittest Mistake when Charles Darwin dropped On the Origin of Species, people immediately twisted survival of the fittest to mean only the biggest, meanest, most jacked dudes win. But in biology, fittest doesn't mean you can bench press a literal ton. It just means you fit your environment well enough to have babies. Sometimes, being the fittest means being the smallest or the quietest or the one that's really good at pretending to be a leaf so nothing eats you. If you're a moth and the trees turn black from soot, fitness is just being a slightly darker shade of gray than your neighbor. It's not a gladiatorial arena. It's more like a giant, high-stakes game of don't die before you reproduce. Most of the time, the fittest isn't the alpha predator. It's the creature that was just boring enough to be ignored. Number 8. The Leaming Suicide Lie If you grew up watching nature documentaries, you probably have a mental image of lemmings blindly following each other off a cliff in a tragic, furry mass suicide. It's the ultimate metaphor for following the crowd, but the whole thing was staged by Disney. The 1958 film White Wilderness, the filmmakers literally bought a bunch of lemmings, flew them to a location where they don't even live, and used turntables to hurl them off a cliff into the water to get the shot. In the wild, lemmings are actually quite sensible and don't have a collective death wish. They might occasionally fall in the water while migrating, but they aren't marching to their doom because of some biological glitch. We spent 60 years using a fake rodent massacre to describe human groupthink, which is arguably the most human thing we could have done. Number 7. The 10% Brain Myth Some people love to believe we only use 10% of our brains, mostly because it makes them feel like they have a secret superpower waiting to be unlocked by a glowing blue pill or a very expensive self-help seminar. This discovery is actually a giant pile of scientific garbage. If you only used 10% of your brain, evolution would have shrunk your skull down to the size of a grapefruit to save on calories, and a tiny bit of head trauma would be no big deal, instead of, you know, a life-altering emergency. In reality, brain scans show that almost every part of your noggin is firing off signals, even when you're just sitting on the couch wondering if you left the oven on. Every synapse is doing something, even if that something is just helping you remember the lyrics to a song you hate. Your brain isn't a dormant engine, it's an around-the-clock rave that you're fully invited to, even if you're currently using that 100% capacity to argue with strangers on the internet. Number 6. The Goldfish Have a 3-Second Memory Hoax We've all used the goldfish memory excuse to justify why we walked into a room and immediately forgot why we were there. We like to imagine these orange little guys are living in a permanent state of ooh, a castle, ooh, a castle, every time they swim in a circle. But science has actually proven that goldfish are surprisingly sharp. They can remember things for months, recognize their owners, and even be trained to navigate mazes or push levers for food. Some researchers even taught them to drive a little robotic tank on land, which is a terrifying thought for anyone who hasn't cleaned their tank in a while. The three-second myth was likely invented by people who wanted to feel better about keeping a social, intelligent animal in a tiny glass bowl without any enrichment. Basically, your goldfish isn't forgetful. It's just bored out of its mind watching you eat cereal in your pajamas. Number 5. The Mount Everest is the tallest. Technicality. Every school kid knows Mount Everest is the king of the world, sitting at a cool 8,850 meters. But Everest is only the tallest if you use the extremely biased metric of sea level. If you measure from the actual base of the mountain to the peak, Mauna Kea in Hawaii absolutely smokes it. 
Most of Mauna Kea is hiding underwater, probably out of modesty, but from bottom to top, it's over 10,000 meters tall. And if you want to get really technical about farthest from the center of the Earth, Mount Chimborazo in Ecuador wins because the Earth is a bit chunky around the equator. Everest is basically just the guy who won the trophy because he started the race on a higher hill. Calling it the tallest mountain is like saying a guy on a ladder is taller than a basketball player. Number 4. The natural is always better fallacy. Marketing teams love to slap the word natural on everything to make you feel like you're hugging Mother Earth with every purchase. We've been conditioned to think natural equals safe and synthetic equals scary chemicals. This is a great way to ignore the fact that arsenic, cyanide, belladonna, and the plague are all 100% organic, locally sourced, and all natural. Meanwhile, synthetic vitamin C is chemically identical to the stuff in an orange. Nature isn't your kindly grandmother. She's a chaotic, neutral scientist who has spent millions of years trying to figure out new ways to poison things so they don't get eaten. Assuming something is healthy just because it grew in the dirt is a fantastic way to end up in the emergency room with a very natural case of liver failure. Number 3. The Blood is Blue Blunder At some point in middle school, you probably stared at the veins in your wrist and became convinced you were carrying around a gallon of royal blue Gatorade. The story goes that blood is blue inside your body because it lacks oxygen, and it only turns red the second it hits the air. It's a beautiful, poetic lie that makes your circulatory system sound like a mood ring, but it's scientifically bankrupt. Your blood is always red. When it's oxygen-rich, it's a bright cherry red. When it's depleted, it's a dark, bruised maroon. It looks blue through your skin because of optical physics, specifically, the way light waves interact with your tissue and fat. Basically, your skin is a dirty filter that's gaslighting you. If your blood were actually blue, you wouldn't be a medical marvel. You'd be a horseshoe crab, and you'd have much bigger problems than a misleading science teacher. Number 2. The chimpanzees are our ancestors, mix-up. If you want to make an evolutionary biologist twitch, tell them humans evolved from chimps. This misunderstanding has fueled a century of, if we came from monkeys, why are there still monkeys? Arguments that make everyone's brain hurt. We didn't evolve from chimpanzees. We are distant cousins who share a common ancestor. Think of it like this. You didn't descend from your cousin Dave. You and Dave both descend from your grandma, who is definitely not a chimpanzee. About six million years ago, our lineage split. One side went off to become the guys who make tools and pay taxes, and the other side stayed in the trees and stayed buff without ever hitting the gym. We're just two different branches on a very messy family tree. Stop asking why chimps aren't turning into humans. They're busy being successful chimps, and honestly, looking at the state of the world, they might have won the evolutionary lottery. Number 1. The Dolphins Are Peaceful Saviors Delusion we love to paint dolphins as the soulful, smiling hippies of the ocean, the kind of animals that spend their days saving shipwrecked sailors and meditating in the surf. This misunderstanding is mostly fueled by Flipper and the fact that their faces are literally stuck in a permanent grin. In reality, dolphins are the frat bros of the sea. They are highly intelligent, yes, but they use that brain power to engage in some seriously dark behavior. They've been documented bullying porpoises for sport, ganging up on rivals, and generally being the ocean's most charismatic jerks. They don't save humans because they love us. They're just curious, social mammals who happen to find us interesting for five minutes. If a dolphin pushes you toward the shore, it's just as likely he's trying to play fetch with your drowning body as he is trying to save you. Weird scientific facts that feel wrong but are true. Number 8. Your stomach is melting itself. You've probably been told since high school biology that your stomach uses a ridiculously powerful corrosive substance to break down your lunch. We're talking about hydrochloric acid, which, fun fact, is the same stuff used in industrial cleaning to dissolve metal. But think about this. Your stomach is made of meat. If the acid is strong enough to chemically murder a steak, why is your stomach lining not currently, shall we say, vaporized? The answer is a protective mucus layer that is thicker than your patients during a slow Wi-Fi connection. This layer of mucus is basically a biological riot shield, constantly being replaced and thickened to neutralize the acid before it can start digesting your actual organ. If that mucus layer fails, even a tiny bit, you get an ulcer, which is essentially a small hole burned into your stomach wall by the same chemicals that are supposed to be helping you. 
So, every single day, your stomach is engaged in a low-stakes, high-stakes battle against self-destruction, and the only thing stopping you from being a puddle of self-digested goo is a coating of slime. Your body is a masterpiece of self-sabotage and instant repair, all at the same time. Number 7. You are taller in the morning. This one sounds like a ridiculous gym bro conspiracy theory, but it's absolutely true. You go to bed one height, and you wake up slightly, maybe half an inch taller. Don't get too excited, though. It's not a permanent growth spurt. It all comes down to the squishy, gelatinous discs of cartilage between your vertebrae, your spine. Throughout the day, as you're fighting gravity, walking, sitting, and generally existing, the weight of your body slowly compresses these discs, squeezing out the fluid that gives them their lovely bounce. Think of it like stomping on a sponge all day. Then, when you finally get horizontal and go to sleep, with gravity off your back, those discs slowly rehydrate and expand, like tiny, thirsty sponges. So you are technically at your most magnificent, tallest, most stretched-out self right as you crawl out of bed, only to immediately shrink back down by happy hour. Basically, your body spends all day fighting its own design, and your nervous system is just throwing a tantrum in your honor. Number 6. Wood is thicker than glass. When you think about stopping a high-speed projectile, what do you picture? Obviously, something dense and transparent, right? Well, toss that assumption in the trash, because when it comes to x-rays, a simple piece of wood is far better at blocking the radiation than a pane of glass. This seems fundamentally wrong because glass feels solid, heavy, and impenetrable, whereas wood is often thought of as relatively porous and organic. But it all comes down to density and the elements involved. Glass is largely made of silicon dioxide, which is pretty light and lets the x-rays cruise right through. Wood, on the other hand, is mostly carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen elements, with a structure that just happens to be denser in terms of packing atoms, making it more effective at scattering those high-energy photons. So, the next time you're worried about accidental x-ray exposure, don't hide behind the office window. Find a nice, dense oak desk. Your furniture is literally a better shield than the wall of a fish tank. Number 5. Ants don't fall. No, seriously. Put an ant on a ceiling, or on the underside of a leaf, and no matter what physics dictates, it simply won't plummet to its doom. We, as humans, are constantly battling gravity. We trip, we slip, and if we try to hang upside down, the world wins pretty quickly. But ants? They can scale vertical glass and walk upside down for hours without breaking a sweat, or, you know, breaking their neck. The trick is less about superhero grip strength and more about a tiny, beautiful lie called the van der Waals force. When the ant's minute foot pads covered in microscopic hairs get incredibly close to a surface, this weak, residual electromagnetic attraction between the molecules is activated. The cumulative power of millions of these tiny forces across the ant's little feet creates a super sticky bond. It's not glue, it's not suction, it's just physics being intensely polite to the insect kingdom. They don't defy gravity, they just use chemistry to casually ignore it. Number 4. Your liver can regrow. If you were to lose an arm, that arm is gone forever. If you were to lose a large chunk of your kidney, you're in serious trouble. But your liver? That spectacular, multitasking organ is the only internal organ in your body that can fully regrow itself back to its original size, even if you lop off as much as 75% of it. This isn't just cell repair. It's proper regeneration that takes place through a rapid increase in cell division. Surgeons frequently take advantage of this when performing liver transplants from living donors, where they can confidently remove half an adult's liver and watch it grow back in both the donor and the recipient within months. Think about that. You have a biological cheat code inside you that allows an organ the size of a football to behave more like a starfish than a human component. It's an evolutionary insurance policy against toxicity and damage, which is pretty handy, considering how we treat it. Number 3. Sand is not what you think. You walk on the beach, you build sand castles, you get it stuck in places where the sun don't shine, and you assume it's just tiny little rocks. Which is mostly true, but the composition is far weirder than rock dust. In tropical areas, especially near coral reefs, a massive portion of the white, pristine sand you're sinking your toes into is actually fish poop. Specifically, parrotfish, which look like brightly colored, 
aquatic goofballs, spend their entire lives scraping algae off dead coral with their beak-like teeth. They ingest the coral skeleton along with the algae. Their incredible digestive system grinds it all up, and then they excrete it as fine, white sand. One single parrotfish can produce hundreds of pounds of this stuff every year. So, that idyllic vacation spot you just paid thousands of dollars to visit? You're walking on, playing in, and potentially tracking into your rental car, the digestive byproduct of a brightly colored bony fish. Welcome to the geological cycle, it's surprisingly gross. Number 2. The hot water effect. Here is a fact that violates basic physics and common sense. Hot water can freeze faster than cold water. This is known as the Mpemba effect, and it has baffled scientists for decades, even Aristotle noticed something similar. If you take two identical containers of water, one hot and one cold, and put them into a freezer, the hot one will sometimes turn to ice first. While there's no single universally accepted explanation, the leading theories involve weird concepts like the faster evaporation in the hot water reducing the mass that needs to be cooled, differences in dissolved gases, or the way the cooling hot water affects the frost layer in the freezer. Basically, the universe is telling you that sometimes, taking the long, hot route is actually the fastest way to get to absolute zero, just to mess with your expectations. Number 1. You share DNA with bananas. You are a complex, conscious primate, with opposable thumbs, capable of building rockets and writing poetry. A banana is a yellow, peelable mush. Yet, you share a truly surprising amount of genetic material with this tropical fruit. Specifically, about half of your DNA is identical to a banana's. Now, before you start having existential crises about your lineage, understand that DNA is just a code for building life, and a lot of that code covers the basic, essential operations necessary for any living thing, cell repair, metabolism, energy conversion. Those are the universal instructions that haven't changed much over billions of years. So, while you and a banana are separated by millions of years of evolution, at the fundamental level of how to be alive, you're practically cousins. That's all for today. I'll be making similar videos in the future. Subscribe to see them.